All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Yahweh Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah being the name of His only begotten Son, who they ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Now, when you look at these Edomites, they have a description in the scriptures, and it's a simple and easy to understand description. And we know it's only one group of people that fits this description. So when you go into Psalm, King David, he gave a description of the Edomites. When you go into uh, Job 30, he gave a description of the Edomites. The uh, Hebrew Paul, Apostle Paul, gave a description of the Edomites, Obadiah, Habakkuk, the Jeremiah. The end of Jeremiah, he ended Jeremiah ended his writing on the Edomites, the the second coming of Yahweh who they ignorantly called Jesus Christ. He said he was coming for the nation of Edom. You see, so it's clear who the Edomites are, and it's clear that they they would be ruling in the um, last days, in the end of the world. That's why they took out the Apocrypha, because it detailed who was going to be the end of the world. It showed how the Judas of Maccabees was fighting against the children of, of Esau. And in history, the only people that Judas Maccabees fought against was the so-called white man who was calling himself a Greek. The Alexander the Great uh, descendants or his um, people that took over after him. The it was clear who these Edomites were. So when you go into the Negroes, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native American descendants of slaves, those who is under their rulership and that's uh, in submission under the so-called white man, for them to know his history and not to uh, recognize who he is is a, almost a miracle. But the scriptures talk about those who uh, can't recognize who he is and don't uh, give him uh, or who, who can't identify him through his record, nobody's going to pity them. And let me get that scripture because this pretty much what I want to bring out. Okay. Let's see here. It's in Ecclesiasticus 12. The 13th verse. 12 and 13. It says, who would pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent or any such as come near, uh, any such as come near wild beasts? Now, in Revelation, it talks about the dragon, which is a word that's synonymous with serpent. It talks about the great dragon and the old serpent. And it talks about the beast. And so these individual um, descriptions is going to only one people, see, because the Lord made them to be this way, just like he made the snakes. When you talk about snakes, you know there's only one uh, animal that, that's uh, known to be with these same characteristics. He lay on his uh, stomach like a worm and he 
wiggle around and he'll bite you with a venomous bite. Now, when you look at King David, what, 58 and 3, he talks about these Edomites. He said, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. So King David described these Edomites as serpents as uh what you call it um as snakes pretty much now when you go <clears throat> into um go back to Ecclesiastes twelve and thirteen he says who will pity a trauma that is bitten now, when you get bitten by these red dragons, it's not nobody's gonna have pity, see, nobody's gonna have mercy on you. Because the thing about it is you knew the recipe of this animal. See, you knew the the um You knew the mind state and the characteristics of this, this serpent. See, who is going to pity you when you get bitten by this serpent? And most people know a serpent. They know his history. He's known for biting people. He's known for being sneaky and subtile. Moving slowly, camouflaging himself, he's known as for being a cunning hunter. See, that's what Esau was said to be before he was even born. Hey, one is going to be a cunning hunter. Revelation 12 and 9. See, it says, like that. The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. See. He was always characterized as being a serpent. Okay. Let me see what King David said. Something else about this dragon. Um, Psalm 64 I think. Okay, it's not Psalm 64. Um, it says, who will pity? Who will pity? Let's go back. I said, or any such as come near a wild beast. Okay, now let's go back to Revelation again. And make these two points visible. Okay. It describes a miracle to be specific in verse 11. It says, and I beheld another beast. See, coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. See, he's just like that serpent, speaking lies, being deceptive. But this one, he got a history of, on him. This beast has a history. Look at verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So this beast led people into captivity this beast was a slave master this beast was doing all kind of atrocities in slavery and for you to forget the characteristics of this beast and charm him see meaning you 
trust this thing to be friendly with them. You, that's what you do with a friend. You show them a friend. You, you get close to him and show him, show him him like he your friend or something. See, and this is why you going to suffer and you ain't going to get no pity. And this is what these Negroes are doing. That's why I say, look at verse 4. It say, and they worship the dragon which gave power to the beast. See, this is the same people, man. They worship these people. And that worship goes into respect, honor, admiration. See, this is what these Negroes do who is in captivity. They worship the so-called white man and trust and respect him on a level that they'll trust, put their life in his hands and knowing that he's a freaking serpent, that he's a snake or a freaking beast, he will devour you. See, they know these things and they still go and trust the devil. See? But that's what that verse is talking about. Esau eat him. The red dragon, the serpent, the beast. The so-called white man. So I just want to bring that out real quick. All praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Yahweh Double honor to the elders, Christian and true. Peace to the elect worldwide. Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.